is the University of Southern California the latest place of higher learning to limit free speech? The university is coming under fire for canceling valedictorian Asna Tavisum's graduation speech out of, quote, safety concerns. USC said it was rescinding its hand-picked choice of Tavisum, a Muslim student, after receiving emails and other threats of a plan to disrupt the graduation ceremony and target Tavisum. It is worth noting that two campus pro-Israel groups complained, citing a social media post that she made expressing support for Palestinians and opposition to the state of Israel. Tavisum responded in a statement writing, quote, I am both shocked by this decision and profoundly disappointed that the university is succumbing to a campaign of hate meant to silence my voice. There remain serious doubts about whether USC's decision to revoke my invitation to speak is made solely on the basis of safety. The Council on American Islamic Relations, a civil rights organization, condemned the decision, calling it cowardly. Now, canceling Tavisim caused an uproar online. Progressive writer Wahajit Ali took to X, posting her statement, writing, quote, USC's cowardice in canceling the commencement speech only amplifies Asna and puts a greater spotlight on Gaza. Genius move. Muslim Congresswoman Ilhan Omar also blasted the move, posting, quote, shameful. This is a direct attack on freedom of speech. She earned her spot after years of hard work and academic excellence. Bigotry towards minority students cannot be normalized. Asna never let their anti-Muslim discrimination dull your shine. In an email to Rising USC for comment, uh, we asked, uh, Rising asked USC for comment, and they replied, quote, the decision had nothing to do with the background or viewpoint of the valedictorian, but was instead based on a careful and holistic review of the situation from a safety and security standpoint. While the decision was difficult, it was necessary to maintain and prioritize the security of the USC community during the coming weeks. Now, notably in her statement and in an interview that she did on um, uh, Abby Phillips's show uh, last night, uh, Asna pointed out that when she was brought in to discuss this with the administration, they did not offer any clarity about what those security concerns were. And so far, it looks like that has just been the pat statement that they've given, that there are security concerns without going into any more detail. Yes, and I think that's very key, is the need for the university to be transparent about those security concerns, because obviously I don't think they should just go forward with it and throw her to the wolves if there was like a literal specific threat. Um, now, what is incumbent on the university is to allow her to speak. They've made this invitation that she's the valedictorian, the valedictorian gets to speak. They can't cancel that because someone, just because someone is threatening it, that's giving in to the, the heckler's someone? veto. Address the right, someone. Right, right. So they should provide security to make sure it is safe for her to speak. Um, if the threats go beyond or are beyond the university's ability to respond to, then they need to involve more serious police matters, investigate, and make her able to give this. You, you can't let the person threatening you win in this case, or else this incentivizes people to prevent speakers they don't like from speaking by making these kinds of threats. This is giving into the heckler's veto. It is not permissible. It is not a reason to limit free speech. I looked for a statement from um, the Foundation for Individual Rights and Expression, a group that monitors threats to free speech on campus that I often take my cues from. And they say um, this is an utterly transparent attempt at censorship. Uh, the first big one of commencement season, USC is setting a poor example. And they call for, at a minimum, um, uh, uh, transparency about what the, the threat is. They say rarely are authorities genuinely concerned about true threats of violence. Yeah, and many people were pointing out that USC came under focus years ago for hosting Milo Yiannopoulos, and there was a lot of pushback about whether or not he should be platformed or whether he shouldn't be, but he was allowed to yeah. speak at USC, and the irony of this school that is being presented as a progressive bastion having their door swung wide open for a very right-leaning person like Milo Yiannopoulos. I was actually the, but shutting it to Yeah, I, I was there when he Ryan. spoke at, uh, I, I don't recall if he spoke at USC, that might have been a different incident, but I, I attended when he um, spoke at Berkeley. Um, and uh, and yes, they had, uh, they had metal detectors, they had, people had to get patted down and screened to get to the, I mean, they, Frankly, they let him speak in the barest minimum kind of definition that if you went through exhaustive security, there was an area where he maybe got to speak for a few seconds. So that was not a, a good free speech moment, but the people 
mad about that and mad about when this has happened to Heather McDonald and Christina Hoff Summers back in the day and other uh, Charles Murray provocative speakers on campus who, who faced threats of violence and in some cases actual violence. Um, the, the response was a lot of correct fury. People invited to speak need to be able to speak. The university should make it safe for them to do so. Um, so this is a it just a frankly, a textbook example yeah, you're of right. a it university UC succumbing to, a, I mean, the, to the, a heckler's the, veto. The worst read here, I think the most unsympathetic, but probably, frankly, given the pattern that we've seen across college campuses, accurate read, is that when we're talking about safety concerns, what we mean is the prior prioritization of feelings of safety, whether or not those are objective, from Jewish students. I recently did an interview uh, with Natasha Bertrand at The Intercept. Uh, she wrote an article about this very issue. She, she's both a professor herself, a, a Jewish person herself, talking about how to make that kind of a distinction and how these safetyism concerns are being weaponized for exactly these kinds of purposes. If the safety that's being protected and safeguarded here is to sideline someone who worked hard for four years to achieve academic excellence that made her the valedictorian of her class and then sideline her. Again, before she even had written her speech, one thing that came out in the Abby Phillips uh, discussion was that she hadn't even decided what she was going to write yet. She hadn't even put pen to paper. But there was perhaps, arguably, a presumption that she was going to say something that was unsettling to the student body or at least some parts of the student body because they simply disagreed politically with it. And a point that Ozan has been making is that her school is a university where she was able to take a class called Resistance to Genocide, where she was able, in fact, to minor in Resistance to Genocide, and that the school purports to value the kind of politics that she has espoused in her personal life and um, you know, publicly on our social media and things like that. But they will not, apparently, allow her to articulate the value, some of which she learned at this university, on a public stage if there are people in the community that are going to have some discomfort there. Yeah, I mean, safetyism is the most um, obvious or accessible tool of would-be censors um, on the planet. Uh, just yesterday, I cover, we covered the, um, the this national, conservative, uh, national conservatism conference that was taking place in Brussels and how the authorities repeatedly interrupted it and shut it down briefly. Or same same argument that the speakers were going to say things that were provocative that were going to potentially inflame protesters or people were going to be big mad about it and that was a threat to public safety so they could stop it from going on um, maybe they can do that under the <laughs> whatever laws are in effect in Brussels but yeah. here in the U.S. they cannot do that because of the First Amendment the First Amendment applies to public universities um, it has been applied to other even to um, non-public universities in some some cases in some senses because they get public funding. So uh, certainly they should yeah. remedy this by letting her. Well, look, here's a reminder that as we speak today, there is another congressional hearing afoot about the issue of anti-Semitism on college campuses. That's fine to have, but there have been no hearings called so far by the Republican Congress uh, to address what is a clear pattern of silencing of uh, not just silencing of pro-Palestinian voices, including Jewish pro-Palestinian voices, but actively active harm that has come uh, physically, including the three uh, Palestinian Americans who were shot uh, last year. Mm. Uh, so we'll keep you apprised of what's going on with that hearing as well. Stick around, more rising coming up next.